Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we're going to look at uh, L'Hopital's rule. Uh, this connects uh, the problem of finding limits of fractions, of ratios, of rational functions and derivatives. And it's a very, very useful tool in evaluating limits. Uh, you may remember when we studied limits, we had the zero by zero problem, infinity by infinity problem, where we had to carefully look at, uh, you know, more, more intricate things. And this L'Hopital's rule uh, will help you in uh, solving those problems uh, in a very simple way. First of all, the, the pronunciation uh, is, is uh, this is a French name, uh, the name of a person who uh, invented or came up with this rule, uh, L'Hopital. Uh, actually, the word itself means hospital. And a lot of us uh, learn it as L hospitals rule or something like that. Uh, I think L'Hopital is the correct uh, French pronunciation, or close enough to the French pronunciation that I can manage. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, limits of ratios of functions are always a little complicated because you have these indeterminate forms. What are these indeterminate forms? You may get 0 by 0. So, so normally, how do you find limit as x tending to c of f of x by g of x? You may simply want to substitute x equals c in the numerator, g equals c in the denominator and see if the ratio comes to something finite, right? So, that's something that you can uh, reasonably do. Uh, but then, if you get a 0 by 0 form or an infinity by infinity form, you're a little stuck. We don't know what to do. Okay. So, there are two different uh, cases here. You could have f of c and g of c being 0 or you can have f of c being uh, either plus minus infinity or g of c being plus minus infinity. These cases require a closer look. Okay. You are not sure what to do. So, the basic idea behind L'Hopital's rule is to use derivatives to solve some of these uh, indeterminate cases. In most cases, it works. In some cases, it may not work, but more or less in every case, uh, it will work. Okay. So, let us see what the rule is. The rule is very simple, okay. So, here is the rule. If uh, f and g are differentiable in an, uh, in an interval, okay, in an interval uh, a comma b, uh, maybe, maybe at c they are not, uh, the, they may not be differentiable. That is okay. At c something can happen, but generally in the interval a, b, they should be differentiable except at uh, one point c maybe, right, the point c in which you are taking the limit, right. So, there uh, you do not care too much, okay, and uh, otherwise they need to be differentiable. And then uh, we are going to suppose that the denominator in this f of x by g of x, uh, the denominator, the, the derivative of the denominator does not go to 0, okay. Once again, in this interval, except possibly at c, okay. At c, we will always make exceptions because, uh, because there is a ratio, so we do not care too much about at c. But outside of c, f and g have to be both differentiable and the derivative of g should not vanish, should not become 0 because you are dividing by that, okay. And then what should happen? Look at this lot of conditions, but then what should happen? F prime of x by g prime of x, that limit as x tends to c should be equal to L. So, this limit should exist. The derivative ratio limit should exist. If that happens, then, okay, finally the condition comes. If you have f of c equals g of c equals 0 or g of, g of c is plus minus infinity, okay. So, you should either have both f of c and g of c being 0 or you should have g of c being g of x, g of c, the denominator going off to plus minus infinity. Then it turns out the limit as x tending to c of the ratio f of x by g of x is the same as the limit as x tending to c, c f prime of x by g prime of x, okay. So, a lot of things to unpack. Forget about these kind of conditions, you know, these are technical conditions. This differentiability, most functions we give will be differentiable, do not worry. Uh, but this condition is important. g prime of uh, x should be non-zero outside of c that is important and this condition is also very, very important. Only when this is true, this condition holds, right? f of c should be equal to g of c should be 0 or g of c should be plus minus infinity. And one of these two conditions should hold. If they hold, then the limit as x tending to c of f of x by g of x ends up being equal to limit as x tending to c of f prime of x by g prime of x. So, you can take the derivative of the numerator, derivative of the derivative of the denominator and then take the ratio and then take the limit, you get the same answer, okay, provided this limit exists, okay. Why is this useful? Because in many cases, f prime of x by g prime of x will become significantly simpler than f of x by g of x because we, we have already seen, right? In polynomials, if you keep on differentiating, eventually you get a constant and then you get 0, right? So, the function becomes simpler and simpler when you differentiate, the degree reduces in some sense, right? So, this tends to happen in many cases. So, this ratio may be simpler than f of x by g of x. And those are the cases in which L'Hopital's rule is very useful. And, and remember, uh, one, you use this once and you can keep repeating it, right? You use it with f of x, g of x and you get f prime, g prime and then you can use it on f prime, g prime. If still you have these conditions true, 
then you can use it further and get do f double prime g double prime. You can keep on going as long as this condition is true, okay. That is important to remember. This condition needs to be true. If this is not true, then it will not work, okay. So, important to check, okay. So, this rule is very useful in these kind of scenarios. I will show you a couple of simple examples and you will see how powerful this rule is. So, I am going to try and prove, like I said, there is always proofs in this class and you can feel free to skip the proof. Uh, but it is I think good to know some cases. So, I am going to do a very simple case. The case where f prime is g prime is continuous in a b and f of c equals g of c equals 0. This is the easiest case and I will do this case and it is a very simple proof. The other cases are technical, they involve more complicated results and we will not uh, see them here, okay. So, when you, when you, do, when you have this condition, it is very, very easy, okay. So, limit as x tending to c f of x by g of x is the same as limit as x tending to c of this guy. How did I get this? It looks very strange, but these two are exactly the same, okay. Think about it for a while f of c is what? 0, right? So, that guy is not even there. g of c is what? 0. So, that is also not there. x minus c and x minus c will cancel, okay? So, this complicated looking uh, ratio is actually the same as f of x by g of x. I have just rewritten it uh, to, uh, you know, bring out what is it that I want. Now, limit as x tending to c of the numerator is nothing but f prime of c. Limit as x tending to c of the denominator is nothing but g prime of c, okay? So, both of these work out. Now, because this f prime and g prime are continuous and this ratio works out like that, this becomes the limit as x tending to c of this guy, okay. So, here is where the continuity is used, okay. You know that when the function is continuous, you can, uh, you know, take the limit inside, right. We know that that is true. We have seen that result. <coughs> so, because these functions are continuous, uh, this limit can be taken out and you get this limit, okay. So, this result is proved for uh, this special case. Of course, this is not required, no, I mean, for instance, you know, you may have g of c being infinity, this may not be true or you may have, you know, f prime g prime being continuous is not needed, it needs to be f and g have to be differentiable, the derivative need not be continuous. So, all those cases are a little bit more complicated, uh, we won't see those proofs. So, this concludes the proof that we want to see, simple proof, right, it's an easy proof. Okay, let's see how it is applied, there are two problems where I am going to apply it. Uh, first uh, problem is limit as x tending to 1 of x minus 1 by x squared plus minus 5x plus 4. First thing is to check the conditions. You can check, uh, many conditions you can check, but the most important condition, believe me, is this one, right? f of c should be g of c should be 0 or g of c should be plus minus infinity. If this condition is not true, you cannot use L'Hopital's rule. So, let us check that. If, if, you, if, you, if you put x equals 1, numerator goes to 0. Denominator also goes to 0, right? 1 minus 5 plus 4, that is also 0. So, you have 0 by 0, that is okay. And all the continuity differentiability will be true because we are dealing with just polynomials. You know, polynomials can be, uh, there are differenti differentiable, continuous, all of that is true, okay? So, uh, so this is uh, numerator 0, denominator 0 case. So, all you have to do is to evaluate the derivative of this to find the limit. So, let us do that. So, limit does x tends to 1 of x minus 1 by x squared minus 5x plus 4. Uh, by L'Hopital's rule, it becomes limit as x tends to 1, the derivative which is just 1 divided by 2x minus 5. Now, you know, you can substitute x equals 1. If you substitute x equals 1, you get 1 by minus 3 which is minus 1 by 3. That is the limit as x tends to 1, okay. So, if you submit, uh, substitute it here, you are getting the 0 by 0 indefinite form, right. This is 0 by 0. So, you can use L'Hopital's rule, okay, all right. The next problem is really where the power of this uh, rule maybe is a little bit more apparent. There will be other cases we will see later on where you will find this. The numerator is one big seventh degree polynomial, denominator is another big seventh degree polynomial, okay. You can substitute x equals 2 here and you will see the numerator will go to 0, denominator will go to 0. Takes a little bit of calculation to find that, I agree with you. But it is, uh, you can check that, it is not very hard to check, okay. Now, you can take the derivative and substitute because it is 0 by 0. You can take the derivative and simply substitute and you will get the answer, okay. So, there are other ways to do it as well, you know, you can do factorization and all that in this case. In this case, it is possible. We will see that there are other cases where uh, this is even more powerful. But you see, in these kind of problems, when you get a 0 by 0 indefinite form, uh, you, you need to differentiate and do it, okay. I am going to leave this as an exercise to you. Uh, you, you differentiate and uh, you will see that in the numerator and denominator, you will probably get non-zero once you differentiate and you can substitute and get the answer, okay. So, such ugly looking expressions also, L'Hopital's rule is very useful. So, once again, what is uh, L'Hopital's rule? To summarize, if you have a limit 
for a ratio f of x by g of x and you have a 0 by 0 or infinity by infinity type indeterminate form, if the conditions are satisfied like you know f and g are differentiable, g prime is not 0 except for that limit point, then you can move to the derivative f prime by g prime okay and then evaluate the limit there. It, in many cases it may be simpler and you will get the answer very easily okay. Thank you very much.